Hey guys, just back from Oriel Park there. We're finished on dock four. Drogheda United won and normality has been re restored back to the Louth as Dundalk are uh, once again the winners of the Louth Derby. Uh, it was a decent enough game now, I have to say. The first half, not much happened in it really. It was kind of a cagey affair. A lot of just tapping around the midfield and passing backs until late on when Dundalk did manage to get the breakthrough. Uh, we get a free kick. Uh, Keith Ward hit the crossbar. Bounces down. Darley, he's the only man to react to it. Bang. Header into the back of the net, one nil done dock at half time. Second half the dock came out and within first couple of minutes should have been two, three up. Absolutely fantastic. So it was great for you plays through the uh, middle of the pitch. Keith Ward putting one just wide. I think it was Daniel Kelly as well, just missed. But uh Dundalk kept pressing and it was actually a very bad ball by McCarry, Lewis McCarry, I in Nobody got to it. Draw the players swinging legs at it, everything. And next thing, Darley, he hit the back post to slot it in to make it 2 0. And uh, yeah, that was, was a bit mad. I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> when you seen the ball, it wasn't a great ball, but went in. So happy days. And then Dundalk go on, keep pressing on the attack. Draw I think, showed no real fight in the second half, really. They didn't. And Dundalk's pressure paid off, and the penalty, I'm assuming, was for a handball. Uh, couldn't see it too well from my from where I was standing, but uh, a couple of boys in the shed then started shouting for Darley to take it as he was on a hat trick. But Pat Hoban, of course, takes the penalty, slots it away, calm as you like, and it's 3 0 Dunlock and Cruise Control. Uh, Drogheda did manage to hit back, make it 3 1. Brennan uh, getting in, there was a loose pass at the back, I think it was Brian Garden with a, with a loose pass. Draw had a man to capitalize, but uh, and then just in the last few minutes, just a kill shot, uh, make it 4 1. John Martin, great wee goal, so it was nice finish. So, yeah, makes a nice, nice wee change now for the dock. Now we get pick up the points and move up to third in the league, which is great. Uh, really pressing the top three now. Hopefully, we can get that. So um, next game now is away to UCD, so that'll be a great game. Hopefully we Dundalk can get the three points in that and continue our press for Europe. Thanks so much. I actually wonder whether the team walked in a mass reaction. <laughs> be totally honest. Um, fucking abysmal. Fucking abolical. Every fucking name under the sun. That's probably been the most pissed off and most disappointed been of draw in a while. Um, Look, come here. Especially when you're losing your rival from Dock, you know, up in Oriel Park, Loud Derby. We beat them up at home there back in, in March 1 0. But I think the way we played tonight and the way we lost, uh, it's, it's, it's a disaster. You know, I was coming to this game now fully confident. I think we might I'll be happy with a draw or a win. No one here. It's an absolute joke. The four goals we scored, the four goals we, con we conceded were just terrible. You know, it, Daryl Leahy, their left back scores twice. Fucking twice. Like, Jesus. Come on to hell. Like, jeez, defense, defense has been woeful. The whole team was woeful. Nugent was woeful there in midfield. Every time he got the ball, he lost the ball. Rooney as well, like, he had no chance. Even, like, uh, the likes of... Rooney had to cross the ball in their first half. And the ball was that fucking shit that went outside the other side of the box then, pointing got and done nothing with it. And then even uh, Chris Lyons... Like I, mean, I know Chris Lyons always laid there with, with Boyle and, and, um, and Matt kind of at, at the back. But like, he should be getting to the box a lot more. Like, come here, I, I know, I know it's, it's tough now when you have no chances. But like, you need to get, make chances. Get in the box and do something. It's not a disaster what we've done tonight. And it, it's nobody, no players want even a shout because they're all just fucking shit tonight. All just terrible. Absolute joke. Um, you know, we've got Pats next week. I'm not looking forward to that now. If we, if we play like how we did tonight, then, you know, another loss. We went from, you know, six unbeaten to now being three and beaten, possibly. Two, last two tonight. We're probably another three now on Friday. Um, the only good thing about it tonight was, you know, fantastic support from us. Um, you know, Famous 45, Ultras, and the rest of the fans up there, you know, doing bits. It's like usual. So, the only good thing at the late derby, everything else was just a, a, a fucking disaster. So, um, you know, we were all on Pats, praying that we get something. Um, you know, 
gonna go home, gonna go now and get a bit, get a bottle of Crown and, and start drinking my sours because uh, gonna uh, gonna need it. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Hey lads, um, oh, geez, I don't even want to do this, um, <laughs> but Derry, well, Pat's nil, Derry four, um, there's not much to say, Pat's are absolutely atrocious, absolutely atrocious, the worst Pat's performance I've seen ever, like, so bad, um, I don't know, like, yeah, they've, they've lost a lot of players, um, and they're missing Jamie Lennon and Paddy Barrett at the moment, but they haven't replaced it. Jack Scott is is terrible. Like he's he's so bad. Um, no fight, no desire. Like if they went if they went onto the pitch tonight thinking, like Derry are going to beat us anyway. It's a it's a free hit. Go out and kick lumps out and put a tackle in. Run about, do something. Like just. Really bad now. Like, and I, I give Clancy time because obviously he didn't want to bring in some of his players. They weren't his players. Um, but again, he decided tonight to play two men in the middle instead of going with the three, the three man midfield and five at the back. Like, and it just, it just didn't work. And you do need to make changes. So I do think he made a mistake there. Um, credit to Derry. Derry were 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 brilliant. Uh, Dummigan's goal, ah, oh, like outstanding. But I just I just can't get over how bad Pats were. Like it, it, the players going around throwing their hands up in the air. Redmond was, I, I don't know. Red Redmond was was brutal. Forrester Forrester threw his hands up up in the air more than the amount of times he made a pass. Like he was he was terrible. Um. Joey and Ang looked like he, he he had boots made of lead. Uh, Adam O'Reilly like he he made a couple of mistakes, but he he, he runs about. He's not he's not a holding midfielder, not not a holding midfielder by any chance. He's he's been asked to be a hold be a hold midfielder in a team that like just don't chase back defensively. Their pats like were terrible. There was, there was no effort. Um, I wouldn't even say I'm angry about it or. I'm, like annoyed about it, and just like, it, it was, it was shocking, like really shocking, and really disappointing to watch. Um, like it, it was almost as if they just went in and went, ah, oh, we're gonna lose anyway. It's grand. Everybody expects Derry to beat us, but like Derry were brilliant. McGonagall is brilliant. Matty Smith was fantastic for them. Like Pat's fans are giving them stick and all. Yeah, that's grand. It's to be expected and everything else, but like, it just it was absolutely brutal. Um, but yeah, I think I think I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, to roll roll on next week to to the next one. Um, but yeah, cheers, lads. Hi, right, folks. So it's another emphatic win for Derry City. Um, four 0 win away to to St Patrick's Athletic. Um, <clears throat> great start for Derry. Matty Smith, um, getting his first goal for the club. Ironically, against the club that he left, he left in the winter. Um, five minutes in, what a start! Derry controlled the game very much from from start to finish. Didn't really give some pats any chance at all. Jamie McGonagall thought he doubled Derry's lead moments after the first goal, but the flag was off for offside. Despite the protests that the the ball had come off a. Of, St. Pat's defender. Derry did double their lead um, just after half an hour mark. Great ball across the box from Matty Smith and it was tapped in at the back post by Jamie McGonagall. Just before half time, Brandon Kavanagh with a great little through ball sent McGonagall scampering clear and he, he made, made no mistake. Derry were, were ruthless in the first half. The second half was pretty much as if they controlled the game and on the hour mark, Cameron Dummigan bagged his second goal for the club with a, a 25 yarder which curled in off the off the post with Joseph and Ang having no chance um, a great night all round for Derry um, that's two wins two wins in the space of seven days 11 goals scored one conceded um, it's hard not to get excited when you, you see football like that but you just have to remain 
remain grounded and I'm prepared now for, for Vogue's next Friday night in the Brandeville, which I'm sure after tonight's result um, will swell the gate. And not only that, the Brandeville will be buzzing. Come on, the city. Hi everyone, just back home from Sligo Rovers v Shamrock Rovers. Um, apologies for my voice, uh, it's absolutely gone, but it's a fantastic point for all of us to say. A uh, great response in the second half. Um, thought we started off well, especially in the first half, first 10 minutes. I thought we dominated the ball quite well. But uh, look, once Shams get a foothold of the game, it's very really difficult to get into it. And look, they got a deserved goal. Andy Lyons again with another goal for him. He's been. for him but it's disappointing for us it was a very good header and um, we struggled really in the, in the first half after that goal to really get into the game we couldn't get a foothold into the game at all I thought we played quite well started putting the ball on the ground knocking it around I thought Colm Horgan in midfield had a very very good game tonight I think he got man of the match uh, Bulger and McDonald put on a very good shift as well Hamilton uh, took a very uh, had a very well taken goal and McGinty as well just Saving us time and time again. Um, Ron out of words to describe how good he is. He's just absolutely phenomenal. Um, Gary Buckley, absolutely immense tonight. Some of the challenges he put in were absolutely superb. Look, he got sent and he got sent off, but I think that last challenge was a challenge that he had to make. Uh, Aaron Green was going to be in it otherwise, so I think it was a, a challenge that probably look he he got the second yellow for it, but it didn't make that challenge. We would have went two one down and. Look, it'll be disappointing now to have him gone, but I thought Blaney and um, Blaney and Nando Pinyanka are very good at centre half as well. Good partnership for him in there as well, which is great to see. Um, yeah, look, overall delighted with the point. If you told me at the start of the game that is going to end one one, I would have snapped your hand off. Uh, look, Shamrock Rovers are in great form at the moment. Uh, no denying that they're a great team uh, all over the park. There's some fantastic players, uh, but I thought we held ourselves quite well. Uh, Keena struggled to get into the game a wee bit, a couple of chances in the first half. Um, Hamilton very well taken goal, I thought he had a superb shift uh, tonight as well. Uh, also a big shout out to Killian Heaney, uh, young fella came on, 60 minutes, uh, and he held his own really, really well. Took the ball then very, very well to play off the collie for our, for our first goal. Um, so yeah, credit to him, he was absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, good point, three games now unbeaten. Bad form seems to be out of the way, thank God. Uh, yeah, we've moved forward. Hi, Keith. Uh, just a review on our 4-1 win against Longford tonight in the cross. Um, quite a strange result considering the game, the way the game was. Um, City were awful in the first half. Like, couldn't string two passes together. Very sloppy on the ball. Second to a lot of ball. Um, a lot of players anonymous. Um in the first half kept making mistakes kept giving the ball away and deservedly went 1-0 down um, I think a huge loss to Longford was I think his name is Darren Craven if I have the right name um, he went off he kind of had an early clash of knees and it looked like he knocked his kneecap out because he was in, he was going to twist and turn and, but then he went down about 10 or 15 minutes after that Um so he was a huge loss when he went off to be fair to him and what Longford were very good at doing was like City kind of Longford didn't have much of the ball but when they had the ball they used it very well if that's probably the right way to put it or it could be the wrong way really but City were just they were like as much as they had the ball they done absolutely nothing with it Um, and then like they what you call it for Longford there, I think his name is Ryan Graydon, but he had Donnelly on the back of his jersey, he was wearing number seven, playing in the right wing there for, for Longford, he caused Jonas Hacken in a lot of trouble, Um, looked very bright, very bright in the ball, very attacking minded, wasn't afraid to take fellas on, go inside out some, he really impressed me for Longford to be fair to him, Um, so yeah, and City's best uh, probably play that they had was just before half time, which was, which led up to their goal. They kind of worked the ball from right back and switched it to left. And Kevin O'Connor drilled the lower ball across the box and long for the uh, defender tried to clear it and hit into his own goal. So we got lucky and we were actually saying it that the University were going to equalise was 
through something like a set piece or an own goal or a bit of luck because they were awful. And I'd say, well, I know because I was talking to Colin Healy after the game, but um, like he said it, like, you know, they were so bad in the first half, things couldn't get any worse and they knew they had to improve. And I'd say there was a couple of couple of fucks thrown in there at halftime, I'd say, no doubt about it. Um, but in the second half, City improved so much. Like for about, again, for the first 10 or 15 minutes in the second half, they were very sloppy. And and to be fair to Jonas Hakkinen, who's an excellent defender, your man Graydon like, was going at him all the time and like it exposed Hakkinen a lot. So I was actually watching the game and I said they need to bring on Daryl Crowley for speed and either get him to mark Donnelly or get Barbary to mark him and change things up. So Keane Murphy, who'd been had had who had a poor game anyway, um, they took off him and took off Hacken and, and put Barbary from right midfield over to left wing back, and dropped Kevin O'Connor in behind him, and then um, brought Daryl Crowley onto the right side of midfield, um, and it changed like that. That those two changes changed the game literally because Longford, in that sense, City were very pedestrian with the ball, and Longford had a bit of pace about them and that changed it um, and Barry Coffey who had up to that was very poor looked like was done nothing he was anonymous in the game ended up popping up with two goals and two good finishes to be fair to him um, and Daryl Crowley then added a fourth in the second half probably with about 15 minutes to go maybe around that and t very unfortunate for Longford because Longford were you know they were as good or if not better than City um, but it just as when when the third goal went in long for just you know, the, the heads drop, which can naturally happen too. So to be fair, it wasn't a four one game. I'm delighted it was four one. Um, it was great to keep up the result, and what it did was showed a bit of resolute with the the team as well. That when their back is against the wall, that they can come away and uh, pick up the three points. That was the most important thing. So. We look forward to Treaty in the Cross on Monday at 5 o'clock. Um, hopefully we'll continue the run and just try and stay uh, on top of things with the league because obviously with Galway and Treaty in Longford and, and, and that and they're just and Waterford they're just you know they're just behind us and um it's a very tight league, it's a great league and hopefully we'll keep up the the, the good run of form. Uh, thanks Keith, thank you. Hey guys, uh, full time in the Carlisle Browns and another home game. Jeez. Someone in front of me has their brake lights on. Uh, thanks. Um, full time again. <laughs> Bray Wanderers without a home win this season. Uh, so finish one all um, against Cove. A game that probably a fair result would have been the draw that uh, it turned out to be um Drynan for Cove and Curtis Bourne for Bray uh Drynan scored for Cove just after uh Whitmarsh missed a penalty or I should say Mike Kelly saved a penalty straight down the middle and uh Kelly um brave and bravely enough uh, stood stood his ground and uh parried the ball over um and then, literally, 30 seconds later, Dryden had the ball in the net, so it was 1-0 to Cove. Uh, Bray kind of got back into it as such. Um, not that they were out of it uh, in the early stages of the game, but uh, a fine strike in Curtis Bourne from um, about 20 yards out. And it was one all, and it was one all at the break. Uh, second half was kind of, it was two and a round. There was, uh, there was, there was chances and both teams probably should have taken the chances that they had. Cove broke a few times as Bray were trying to uh, grab the winner. And uh, Marty Waters probably could have, should have scored uh, late on the game. Um, I think it was a knockback from Feeney. And uh, Marty really just had to place the ball into the corner of the net. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he put it wide. And um, that was the game up, really. Um, again, as I say, it's disappointing that... Uh, it's disappointing that we haven't won a home. Um, another draw. And Bray now, Bray sits seventh in the league. Uh, Cove sit eighth, I think. I think I'm saying that right. Um, Bray go on to Wexford next week and uh, next Monday. And um, 
they've been better on the road. Um, they have been better on the road, although the last couple of results haven't been great. But uh, um, Wexford winning three 0 tonight, you know, they'll be they'll be more than uh, up for this game um, against Bray. So, you know, I don't know what I don't know what uh, the management team are hoping for this season, or are they just is it just a betting in season or not, or where do we go? Um, it's, it's disappointing again that we've we failed to win at home, and uh, um, in fairness, we created more chances this week than we have uh, in any other game. So um, we'll see where Monday takes us, and um, I must say, and uh, just to go, go along with what Keith said, uh, I'm doing this in my car, and uh, if anyone wants to sponsor. Um, Anyone doing the vlogs or the match reactions for uh, supporters of teams, um, just hit us up and uh, we can get electric cars. And uh, we can all drive the cars in electric cars and save the environment. But unfortunately, if you don't have a public transport system that is uh, that is that is going every uh, half hour or 15 minutes, unfortunately you have to drive the games and that's it. Bray won, Cove won. Take care, guys. So, the aftermath, the morning after, Harps uh, 1-0 victory over Shells in Fun Park. Um, it's Harps' second win in 13 matches. Isn't very good now. 10 points with 13. Um, but the two wins have come against Shells. So, uh, <laughs> I'm sure Damien Duff is not happy that there. Uh, Harps seem to be the, the Shells bogey team of the, of the season so far. Um, but yeah, no, overall kind of scrappy match, not very entertaining to watch, it wasn't really a good watch to be quite honest. Um, half time, you know, there's a few chances in the first half, um, Harps kind of had a, had a good few chances, but no kind of, kind of clinical edge and no one really could put the ball anywhere near the net that was going out, you know, for like a goal kick and so on, like, but both times, or both, both sides, you know, but, um, both keepers really had nothing to do the whole match, um. But yeah, uh, second or first half, like you think I'm going into the break, you know, it's going to be a mistake that's going to decide this match. And to be honest, Harps came out the second half, the much better team. And yeah, they basically had the play, although Shells did have a few chances. They had a chance clear off the line by Connor Turrish. Um, so yeah, you know, Harps kind of did push and they had that goal disallowed for a, a handball, apparently. It happened in front of me, I didn't see any handball. I think there's a lot of stuff goes on in the league was where the the opposition players are, are you know chanting they're always shouting away at the ref and they're saying oh no, no, this happened this happened the referee just tends to go with them but anyway Hart's got the goal anyway uh, 88 minute uh, corner and uh, ball broke the edge of the box Luke Rudden dummied it and Barry McNamee stuck it in the net uh, sent the sent the fan of Hart's faithful going go mental uh, which is great so yeah now we're we're off the mark at home uh, for the season. First home win of the season, and we move on to Shamrock Rovers next week with big matches coming up against UCD and Drogheda. So, yeah, overall, fairly happy. And, yeah, roll on the uh, the next few matches. Shamrock Rovers next week will not be any easier, but, um, yeah, I'm sure Damien Bluff is, is, fairly, is fairly licking his wounds today. And right he is. Um, but, yeah, we move on. And, uh, yeah, up the harps.